After a century of two world wars, totalitarian regimes, genocide, holocausts, and untold suffering, the world had great hopes for a new millennium, filled with a new spirit of unity, justice, and peace. However, the 21st century has so far been one of rising tumult, violence, and unrest. Some of the most dramatic climate changes in recorded history, natural disaster after natural disaster, worldwide economic crisis, currency wars afflicting every continent on the earth, and the scourge of war, particularly in the Middle East. But what do all of these unprecedented headlines of today have in common? They were all predicted over 50 years ago. Predictions made by a woman and revealed to the world through another woman. The date is March 25th, 1945. The Second World War is in its final stages. In Amsterdam, a young woman named Ida Perdeman is sitting with her three sisters and their parish priest, Father Frehe. While they are engaged in a lively discussion, something strange happens. Ida sees a magnificent light appear. It's as if her earthly surroundings cease to exist. She sees a beautiful female figure emerging from the light, a lady who begins talking to her. They will call me the Lady Mother. This will be the first in a series of 56 reported apparitions from the Mother of Jesus that would last until 1959. The Lady says that she has been sent by God the Father and by His Son, Jesus Christ, to help humanity. She warns that the world is sliding downward into degeneration, disasters, and war, and prophesies the danger of a third worldwide catastrophe even more destructive than the first two world wars. At first glance, the Amsterdam apparitions could be dismissed as simply the product of a psychological illness. Yet further investigation shows that the middle-aged Dutch woman went through a battery of intensive psychological and medical evaluations as part of a church investigation into the alleged visions. The medical conclusions, Ida Perdeman was found to be of exceptional psychological and emotional balance, socially well-adjusted, and of an unusually down-to-earth, even unimaginative personality and temperament. But could these claimed apparitions comprise just one more expression of present-day religious fanaticism with predictions of an imminent end of the world? The messages of the Lady of All Nations say nothing about the end of the world. On the contrary, the messages speak of a future era of peace for the whole world if heaven's remedies are put into practice. The messages begin with prophecies of a social and political nature. The lady, over 50 years ago, points to specific social, political, and natural disaster events that will have meaning in a decisive period in the future. For example, in 1945, the visionary sees a vision of the Old Testament exodus of the Jewish people from Egypt, and she hears, But Israel will rise again. In fact, the independent state of Israel is declared three years later, in 1948. In 1946, the Lady grants Ida a vision of a red flag flying over China and predicts great bloodshed. In 1949, Mao Zedong wages a bloody civil war that leads to a tyrannical communist regime. In 1949, Ida sees a vision that predicts war and division in Korea and prophesies that this conflict would also be an omen of even greater danger in the future. The fighting in Korea is an omen and the beginning of great distress. In 1950, war breaks out in Korea and as predicted, 
North Korea continues to be a grave nuclear threat for the world. The heavenly woman who describes herself as the lady of all nations predicts a new division in the world if changes are not made. Suddenly, I see Cairo very clearly and I have a strange feeling about that. Then I see several Middle Eastern peoples, Iranians, Arabs, the lady says, in a way the world will be ripped in two. Now I see the globe in front of me and I see a big jagged crack spreading, a burst that runs in twists around the world. Dr. Richard Russell is a professor of national security at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., and a public authority on Middle Eastern affairs. I've been following Cairo Egyptian security for, for many years now, since mid-1980s. And having read that message, for many years I didn't understand what that meant. I mean, what happens around Cairo? I and mean, we've had several wars in the Middle East, 1956 against the Israelis, 1967, 1973. Cairo was involved, but there wasn't warfare in the, the city proper, uh, per se. So I really didn't know what to make of this. Um, there's been a lot of frustration over the years with, with President Mubarak's regime. Uh, for three decades, he had ruled. And there was a lot of, anecdotally, you talk to friends, you get a sense that there's a lot of frustration in Egypt. But it's not until 2011 that, kaboom, you have this, this, this huge, huge um, geopolitical shift or change. President Mubarak is ousted in a relatively peaceful, relatively peaceful uh, revolution, a popular uprising against his rule. And the military doesn't opt not to physically suppress this or try to suppress this. Uh, this is a huge, huge transformation in international politics, in Middle Eastern politics. But now we have to worry about the, the rise of more militant strains of Islam that are really against challenging the West. And this is what I worry about, this split in the globe that, we, that is talked about in the Amsterdam apparitions is that there could be a, a, a you know a w Middle East that is increasingly in turmoil, political, economic, religious turmoil, and it becomes more separated from from Western civilization. But according to the messages, America too is at fault. America, remember your faith. Do not sow wrong ideas and confusion among your people and abroad. The Lady of All Nations exhorts America to remain what it has been. The Middle East, and particularly Jerusalem, appear in the messages as critical locales for world conflict, as predicted in this 1946 message. I see now a dome, and I hear within me, in and around Jerusalem, heavy battles will be waged, gather round together, because the battle is beginning, the gates are opening. The eastern peoples hold their hands before their faces in Jerusalem. The reference to Jerusalem is an interesting one. Um, just in terms of historical context, it's not until 1967, actually, uh, that the Israelis have a, a major war with neighboring Arab states. Uh, the Israelis did a, a, a brilliant military operation and preventively uh, struck uh, Egyptian air bases uh, and took the offensive against Arab states in the region. Uh, at that time, Dr uh, Jerusalem was controlled by Jordanian forces. So the Israelis actually were very successful and actually drove in and liberated from their perspective of Jerusalem and took control over, over Jerusalem from Jordanian forces. It was hailed as a great military success. Now we think that you think that, okay, it's fine. Not, the fighting in Jerusalem happened in 1967, but it's not out of the realm of possibility that we could see in the future a new round of fighting, either with the Israelis and Palestinian forces on one hand, or even uh, forces from Lebanon. Uh, in Lebanon, there was a very, very vibrant political militia movement called Hezbollah, Party of God, among it's in Arabic. Uh, it's among the Shia community, which is is a dominant uh, uh, community inside Lebanon. Uh, they claim Jerusalem too as, as theirs. It's not beyond the realm of possibility that you could have warfare initiated by Hezbollah in Lebanon, uh, the Palestinians in and around Jerusalem, or, and supported by other neighboring states uh, in some su future conflict. 
These astonishing global predictions from the 1940s and early 1950s continue with the lady pointing at the globe and stating, Look at all these countries. Nowhere is there unity. Nowhere peace. Everywhere there is tension. Everywhere fear. The Lord Jesus Christ permits this all. His time will come. But first there will be a time of unrest, paganism, atheism. They will first try to rule this world. At some climactic point, according to the Amsterdam message, all of the countries of the world will be dragged down and immersed in chaos. The visionary sees this in a symbolic way. Then I see blue and white stripes intermingling, and then stars, they look like flags. After that, I see the sickle and hammer, but the hammer breaks loose from the sickle. And now all those things are whirling through one another. Then I see a half moon and sun. These flags, too, commingle with the rest. The Lady of All Nations predicted unusual climate changes for this future era. Do you know what kind of era this is? It is a time such as the world has not experienced in centuries. Such a falling away from faith. She goes on to say, Nature will also change, disaster after disaster, natural disasters. Economic and political conflicts between America and Europe were also predicted. The visionary sees the two continents lying next to each other. And then she sees words. Economic wars, boycotting, disasters. Then I see the word hunger and political chaos. In the 1950s, these prophecies appeared strange and unreal. Today, however, they are coming true, as we see in the media before our very eyes. The global calamities prophesied by the mother of all peoples are always conditional. The purpose of predicted chastisements by Mary is not to reveal an inevitable fate, but rather to reach out to humanity with a remedy and a prevention. But what exactly is the remedy? According to the messages, the mother of Jesus has come to be a spiritual mother for all mankind. She comes bearing a new title that expresses the universal nature of her mission for these times, as she states, I am the Lady, Mary, mother of all peoples. She wants to be mother not only of Catholics or all Christians, but of all peoples, regardless of religion, nationality, or cultural identity. A mother to each and every human being, as she states, Whoever or whatever you are, I can be to you the mother, the lady of all nations. The visionary Ida also received a vision of the devil with his hands holding dice. He cast the dice across the entire world. The lady explains, The world is surrounded by a false spirit, by Satan. There is a spiritual battle taking place. There is a big movement in the world towards good. That is the very reason why that other spirit is at work. That spirit will try to infiltrate in all kinds of forms, slowly, cunningly. It is her mission to lead humanity into a new coming of the Holy Spirit, transforming us into holy and loving children of God. Certainly the world will not be saved by violence. The world will be saved by the Spirit. The fight is no longer about races and nations. The fight is for the Spirit. On February 11, 1951, the Lady reveals a new prayer, which she says has the power to bring true peace to the world. The visionary Ida hears the prayer and then sees it written in large letters. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Spirit live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from degeneration, disaster, and war. May the Lady of all nations, who once was Mary, be our advocate. Amen. The Lady then tells Ida that this prayer is so short and simple that every person in the world can pray it in their own language. It's often asked, why would praying to Mary have any effect on the world situation. 
and how could it prevent things from happening? Uh, well, in fact, there is a, a direct spiritual relationship between our prayers uh, from a Catholic perspective and the world scene. For example, recently the president of the Philippines actually sent a petition for this fifth dogma to Pope Benedict and in that petition for this fifth dogma she talked about this proclamation of Mary as co-redemptrix, mediatrix and advocate actually having a role to stave off natural disaster. Uh, what's the principle behind that? Well, that through our prayers, uh, good things can happen and evil things can either be removed or they can be mitigated. So if in the prayer of the Lady of All Nations, Our Lady is asking uh, us to pray to Jesus, that the Holy Spirit would come down at the hearts of nations, preventing degeneration, disaster, war, uh, that means on a positive dimension that graces would convert hearts, would uh, take away opportunities for war, would bring forward conversion to families and societies, and would even stave off natural disaster. Such is the power of the intercession of Mary. The ultimate remedy for world peace and the most important prophecy of the entire Amsterdam message is the latest request for the Pope of the Catholic Church to make a formal that the mother of Jesus is, in fact, the spiritual mother of all humanity. If the Pope solemnly declares the existing Catholic teaching that Mary is truly the spiritual mother of all peoples, then, and only then, according to the Amsterdam message, Will she be able to fully and most powerfully enact her roles of motherly intercession for humankind at the present critical hour of human history? On May 31st, 2002, Bishop Josef Maria Pont of Amsterdam declared the messages and apparitions of the Lady of All Nations as essentially, quote, consisting of a supernatural origin. At the Marian apparition site in Akita, Japan, declared authentic by the local bishop in 1984, a wooden statue of the Lady of All Nations wept 101 times. These lacrimations, or tears, were filmed, documented, and scientifically analyzed. The results? The tears are genuine human tears. The Marian message of Akita is a continuation of the message of the Lady of All Nations in Amsterdam. The Akita message also speaks of an upcoming global calamity, which is reportedly, quote, greater than the flood. This modern deluge will take place if humanity does not turn back to God in prayer and conversion. The message states that Mary alone can intercede for the graces needed to prevent such a deluge. Although the epicenter of the massive 2011 Japanese earthquake and tsunami was relatively close to the region where the Akita apparitions took place, the damage to this region was far less severe than other regions of similar proximity. Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta offered her own simple yet profound summary of Mary's role as co-redemptrix, mediatrix of all graces, and advocate, and why it should be proclaimed. Mary is our co-redemptrix with Jesus. She gave Jesus his body and suffered with him at the foot of the cross. Mary is the mediatrix of all grace. She gave Jesus to us, and as our mother, she obtains for us all of his graces. Mary is our advocate who prays to Jesus for us. The papal definition of Mary as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate will bring great graces to the church. In the final analysis, what objectively do we find in these prophetic utterances received from a Dutch woman in the 1940s and 50s, which she attributes to the mother of Jesus? We find scores of historic prophecies about war, weather, economic crisis, and moral degeneration, many of which we are seeing fulfilled in our midst. We find a request from the world to pray together a prayer to Jesus Christ, to prevent degeneration, disaster, and war. And we find a heavenly condition for world peace. 
that the spiritual leader of the Catholic Church publicly declare Mary as spiritual mother of all peoples. Whether these messages are true or not, the specific request from the mother of Jesus for a prayer and a proclamation to bring about the sublime fruit of world peace do not, in themselves, seem too much to ask. We have provided some facts. Now you must decide.